Internet through your electrical wiring. Power line adapters have always intrigued me. It's such an obvious yet little seen technology, so I decided to get one and try it out. This is the one I got. It says it can handle gig speeds. Um, I pay for lower speeds for my place, but I didn't want it to be hampered at all and just see what it could do. Uh, this is what came in the box, the PL or power line adapter, the PLW or power line Wi-Fi adapter, and then two small Cat5e patch cables. I read a lot online when researching these about circuits and phases and making sure to check your electrical box diagrams uh, because that was a huge problem with signal loss or these things just wouldn't work at all if you use the wrong outlet depending on your wiring setup. However, after I got the adapters, the paper manual doesn't say anything about this, nor does the larger online manual, and I didn't experience any issues at all, so I'm assuming that the newer technology has fixed that issue, so I'm just going to skip over that portion. If you run into issues concerning these variables in recent years, please let me know. Maybe I was just lucky, but anyways. For setting these up, uh, they literally are plug and play. You plug in the PL, connect that via Ethernet to your router, and then I just plugged in the PLW adapter to any outlet where I wanted to test. Uh, wait about two minutes for it to find the signal and you're good to go. And here's the results. I'll show the speed test just over Wi-Fi, no adapters used, then the 5G Wi-Fi through the adapter, the 2.4, and then the ethernet plugged into the adapter. The results I'm showing here are from the opposite end of the house from the router uh, through about 75 feet of electrical wiring if my measurements are correct maybe a little bit more and this one is through about 50 feet of electrical wiring a little bit closer the one thing i did notice was that the wi-fi and ethernet tests were very similar uh, which is pretty surprising but that is what you would want to see so i guess that means uh this adapter is pretty decent quality and lastly this is through about 25 feet of wiring obviously with the least distance to travel this would be the fastest but still seems to be about a quarter of the top speed I did do some tests randomly after this, and the fastest I got was about half, uh, which is pretty decent in my opinion, but it was never more than that. I never got full speeds or even three-fourths. Half was the fastest that I ever experienced. Um, again, that could just be because of my wiring or the setup that I have. It may be different for others, but that's what I experienced. Now you may be asking, how does this actually work through the electrical wiring itself? Well, let's compare your electrical wiring to regular old ethernet cable. They're both copper, they're both designed to handle electrical currents. The only real difference is that your home wiring already has a massive amount of current flowing through it. So to not cause any interference, the power line adapter simply sends an electrical signal at a much higher frequency to avoid any sort of overlap. Uh, the same idea was used decades ago for dial-up internet, utilizing the same lines as your landline phone. You may also be asking, who would ever use this <laughs> when you could just run an ethernet cable, which is always the best choice. As interesting as this technology is, that's a pretty fair question. A scenario that I could think of off the top of my head was if you just didn't want to run a cable. Say your kid's room or your guest room doesn't have a good enough Wi-Fi signal, you know, it's going through a brick wall or something like that. You don't want a cable snaking up your stairs and down the hall and the signal strength isn't strong enough to put a repeater over there. And all you want to do is just hook up a TV and watch movies in there. So this would be a, a totally viable solution for that, especially if you already have good wiring in your house. Uh, which leads to my next note. Since this relies entirely on how your house is wired and the quality of your wiring, your mileage may vary a lot, especially with older homes or shoddy electrical equipment. So by all means, try it out. If you have a use case for it, please go for it. But maybe keep the box just in case it doesn't meet your needs because it may not work for everyone. Lastly, if you do set one of these up, I do have some closing tips here. One, don't use an ups or any kind of power strip with these. You can try it and see if it works for you, uh, but just keep in mind that they're not meant to be used with anything except going straight into the outlet. Um, a lot of that equipment will degrade the signal or block it altogether, so keep that in mind. Two, this should be a no-brainer, but change the default password. Just like any other normal router, default passwords can be looked up. Even if you shut off the Wi-Fi and you're just going through Ethernet, especially if you share wiring with anyone, like in an apartment building, anyone nearby can just plug their own adapter into the wall, and if they know the default password, they can still use your connection. 
Um, so yeah, make sure to change that. Three, there is a limit to how many adapters you can add to your home's wiring before it starts degrading. Uh, I think the one I have is like six adapters or something, which is a lot of adapters. I don't know if you, <laughs> anyone who would need more than that, but still I'm sure there's more expensive ones that allow you to create more channels and frequency hop and do all that sort of stuff, but just something to keep in mind. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. This technology is just really interesting to me, so I thought I would share it. And if you also found it intriguing, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And thank you for watching.